Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. And Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting streams and on YouTube. And today my guest is Phil Preston from Wollongong in Australia. And Phil is um, going to talk to us about... um, Using business purpose to grow your bottom line. And he's also the author of Connecting Profit with Purpose. And if purpose is important to you and your organisation, Phil is the expert who will guide you into putting it into practice for high performance outcomes. As a former head of financial research overseeing $50 billion of investments, he became frustrated with poor company behaviours and symbolic acts of charity. In 2007, Phil left his 19-year corporate career to find a better way. One where taking on social and environmental challenges is part of core and profitable business. He works with small to medium enterprises through to multinational corporations and everything in between, as well as helping public and social sector organisations work more collaboratively with the private sector and is the author of the book Connecting Profit with Purpose and a paper entitled The Corporate Purpose Blueprint. Talking with the experts. Welcome, Phil. How are you today? Thank you, Rose. I'm very good, thank you. Looking forward to having a chat. Perfectly perfect. Um, So tell me a little bit, um, we'll start off with your book first. Tell me about your Connecting Profit with Purpose book. What's it about? Okay, so I'm going to hold it up here. Um, hopefully it's not getting, there we go and I launched this great timing I launched this literally in about the third week of the pandemic so um, that was on one hand not good but on the other it was good because it opened doing it online opened up to a, a global audience which um, was a bigger reach than I would have normally got um, but what it really comes from is a bit of a journey I've had uh, which I'll just touch on some highlights is looking at corporate social responsibility and philanthropy from a business perspective, and whilst they're all necessary things and things that businesses have to do for certain reasons, they're not the sorts of things that are going to solve climate change or homelessness and take on some of the really big issues we're grappling in the world. So as we know, if you want business to care about something, connect it to their profitability. Mm. And if business can see a way, and we're business owners as well, if you can see a way to grow your profits or cut your costs, um, then, then that's an opportunity. So I've honed in on this I guess area of um, initiatives is actually are good for society, good for the environment, but also adds to your bottom line. And apart from in the book actually detailing some examples and, you know, a little bit of the principles behind it, I actually give a bit of a how-to. You know, how do you actually identify these opportunities? Because, you know, they exist in many different places, but there's no guaranteed recipe that will, will give you the answer. It's, there's a process you have to go through. So I think in summary, yeah, that's what the the book's all about. Yeah, I do agree that corporations or small business have to leave a social footprint of some type. Um, And obviously it does connect to their bottom line and they don't do it for, you know, for for free or for the joy of it Mm. or for the fun of it. But, yeah, they do need to leave a social footprint somewhere and an environmental footprint as well. I mean, in in a clean way, not I'm not saying, you know, they leave a mess, but... um, that, 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 that's my thinking. I, I, you know, I'm a bit of a greenie in the fact that, you know, I, I like to recycle stuff. Um, I like to repurpose things just because, you know, our earth is only limited to what it can take. Yeah, and I think that the, the opportunity is if, you, if it is profitable for you, you're going to keep doing it um, as well. So, uh, you know, that actually adds to the impact you're going to make. And, and so I, I get really excited when companies find a way of solving big challenges in, in a profitable way, um, whether, whether it's an environmental opportunity or, or something on the social um, side. So a really good and quick example is a lawyer in Brisbane as part of a legal practice there, mainly in family law, dealing with a lot of divorce situations. 
And, and what she realised was that the average cost, I, I didn't know this, I don't know if you did, the average cost, legal costs in a divorce case are around $100,000. So that's a huge cost on a family unit mm. if they're breaking up. With, and that's a big social cost um, as well. And she was turning away six out of ten prospective clients because they couldn't afford that, that sort of fee. So instead of, you know, people having to pay $100,000 or walk away, she came up with an innovative online system that, where people for less than $1,000 can go on and well, it won't suit every case, but for couples that are sort of getting on okay or can work their way through the system, um, it actually works for them at a very low cost and they get a result. Um, so, you know, that's a great example of her finding an alternative way to grow her business by creating this alternative product. Um, at the same way, making a huge uh, difference in in uh, in the economy. So that's that's sort of amazing, and that, that's someone finding a market opportunity and a social challenge. Yeah, I, I agree. I I, um, I mean, I did my first divorce. My, I mean, my only divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, have you got a good track record? <laughs> <laughs> my, my only divorce. Um, I did that like for free I didn't you know go through lawyers or anything like that because you know we didn't have any property or or mm. any of those challenges so that was you know that was okay but for those you know that need to to you know divvy up whatever they have it, it can be a challenge and it can be very expensive because I know you know lawyers and they charge an arm and a leg just to write a letter or make a phone call or, or do whatever and it all adds up at the end of the day that's so, right and, and particularly when there's children involved it gets very complex as well it and does can, can get a lot more fractious so uh yeah look um, i mean fantastic example to to highlight of, of what this looks like because you know you you can still in a business you can do charitable activities you can fund things you can do things that protect the reputation of your business but then when you find those nuggets that are real opportunities to grow your business or, or your profitability, that's, um, that's just icing on the cake. Yeah. So what about, um, it, you know, an environmental impact? You know, what, how can they mm. leave their footprint in that way? And yeah, well, profit? as I say, there's, so the first point is there's no specific answer for any particular company. I'll give you an example in a moment. It, it all comes down to what's on their agenda as, as a business. Um, so anyone watching this, it will be very, uh, the context will be very um, tailored to you. But a good example is a farming operation, which I did a case study on recently. It's in New South Wales. It's a pig farm. And what they found was that their feed costs, they were having to buy grain. And as you know, the last couple of years, um, the when the drought was really kicking in, grain costs were sky high. And they realised that it was costing them a lot to feed their, their pigs. Um, so what they did was they started ramping up their partnerships with uh, with food manufacturers. So whether they're manufacturing pasta or ice cream or orange juice or whatever it was, um, they would often have leftover, uh, I guess, lots of food waste. And it was actually costing those food manufacturers money to take it and dump it in a tip. It was costing them something like $300 a, a tonne on average. Whereas for the cost of transportation, which was much less, they could take it to this farm and it was a win-win because basically the farm was getting its its um, feedstock for virtually zero and the company was paying only transportation costs. So um, that farm also, apart from, I guess, reducing, I guess, food waste there, has also done some bio, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's when you trap the methane gas from your, your pigs or your cattle and actually generating yeah. electricity off that. And they're actually selling energy back into the grid as well as meeting their own needs. Wow, biodiversity. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, look, I'd love to say these things could just happen overnight, but quite often you find these businesses, of, you know, you do have to do a little bit of work to get these because they're like any business challenge or business initiative. Um, it, it takes a little bit of work to get it there, but but once you do it, the benefits can be enormous. Um, in the case of that pig farm, they, they cut their, oh, look, I forget the exact figure, or something like that, um, their margin increased by something like twenty percent as a result of lowering that uh, that cost. Wow, that's really great. Yeah. So, um, how can I, I mean a lot of people here are small business owners, the ones that are listening. I mean, I know that there are others, but mainly small business owners. How can they use their business purpose to grow their bottom line? Yeah. So the best. Thing, the best starting point is to make sure you're on purpose or you understand your purpose. And I'm not saying people don't, but as you know, sometimes you get 
uh, embroiled in your business and it's hard to see the wood for the trees sometimes. And we, we can think about business more as an activity than thinking about it in terms of the, the social benefit we create or environmental benefit out the other end. So if we think about, um, let's say, a cafe, it, it might be tempting to, to say, well, you know, we exist to serve coffee and cakes. And that's a very activity-based way of thinking. It's, it's probably true. It's factual. However, if you start thinking, um, say, the dimension could be where well, we exist to help you know, refuel our community and, and help people connect and grow, then that might bring some a different uh, line of thinking to what you offer your customers, um, assuming that's what your customers are looking for and what they, they want. It could be other things as well. But you could be that connector. You could help them grow personally. You could have other offerings that go beyond um, just, just the basic coffee and cakes. So it's the first step is, is really making that transformation, saying, okay, what does that purpose look like? And um, that's, that's the first step. Okay. Oh, sorry. I wasn't <laughs> prepared for you to stop then. I was really intrigued at what you were well, saying. I, I can keep talking if you like. Um, Please do. Yes, uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> So the, the second step is then about bringing some structure because, um, and you, you'll love this, coming from a, look, I, I was in the corporate world for, for quite a while and what we would do, we would go away on an off-site session once a year, we'd reaffirm or change our purpose and we'd come back to work and completely ignore it for another 12 months mm. <laughs> and, and go back, everyone would go back to what they're doing beforehand. Um, but but the, the evidence is, is compelling that uh, the high-performing companies, and, and this is borne out by a lot of global studies, that the truly high-performing companies have purpose at their core. So what you've got to do apart from come up with a good statement, you know, that's not enough on its own, um, you've then got to embed it in your business. And the most important audience is your staff. Clearly your customers are important, but your staff have to believe in it because that's when they'll you know, they'll get excited, energised and actually bring their best selves to work every day. They'll probably go over and above. Um, there's a fantastic book, and I can't quote reach it. It's on my bookshelf behind me called Tribal Leadership, and it was written about 10 years ago now, but it's, it's fairly timeless. Uh, and the authors went out and looked at a range of companies, and they found the ones that really got that high-performance culture were the companies where the team thought they were there to deliver on a, on a higher mission than just making money. Um, so, yes, the, if you embed it through your business, it becomes a case of, well, if you're pursuing a social benefit for your, your customers, then basically your products and services you know, probably will never become obsolete or redundant because you're always tapping into what, what's needed. And it's a case of if you deliver that purpose and deliver on it well, you'll grow your bottom line as a consequence rather than saying, how do I grow my bottom line? And then maybe I'll give some back afterwards. It's, it's sort of changing that dynamic around. Yeah, I think it might be a bit of business mindset too. I mean, I, you know, it, it doesn't cost, you know, a great deal to help somebody else out. And you're right about the staff. If you, I mean, what Richard Branson says, you know, if you don't, haven't got happy staff, you haven't got happy client. So. That's right. The other, the other thing I've found here is that we often think of, you know, if there's a business owner watching and saying, well, that sounds great, but this is going to cost me money to do this. The answer is, well, in many cases, not. It actually is often just about changing the way you, you do things. It's more uh, often about process change than it is about investing dollars. Mm. Um, and a, a very quick example there was around um, some real estate agents who were helping to reduce unnecessary tenancy evictions in their area because sometimes tenants have social challenges. You know, there's things going on in their life, mental health challenges, illness, losing their job. And in that situation, you know, if they're falling behind, it's worth supporting them and trying to keep them in a tenancy. And uh, along the short of it was the real estate agents didn't need to spend any money doing this. It was just making connections at, at the right time and it helped them grow their bottom line because they weren't, um, you know, going through a, an eviction process. It's hard costs and soft costs on their business. It means their clients, the landlords aren't as happy and so on. So there was a big win-win out of that as well. Yep. Yeah, it, it doesn't hurt to diversify your business and, you know, and be kinder to other people. It, it doesn't really take that much. And it doesn't. It takes, uh, as I said, it, it helps if you sit outside a business, often to help businesses do this. So I'm not just talking about myself 
sitting outside a business and helping them. But one of the, the great things you can do, I think, as a business owner is, is talk to as many people who interact with your business as mm-hmm. possible because quite often they can identify some of the true strengths um, that, that go on or, or things that you're really great at that you might not see because you're either too close to them or you just haven't haven't recognised them. Yeah, I agree. It's Yeah, I, we used to own a small business in Queensland. It was a food retail business and it was a fish and chip shop. And, you know, honestly, we, we thought we were doing a wonderful job and the food most of the time was great, except for when the staff were there and we weren't there. And, okay. you know, we someone was brave enough to come and tell us that the food was crappy. So, you know, yeah, but we didn't know. Yeah. Because, yep. you know, so, and so, you know, just take someone to stand up and, and, and speak out. And sometimes, you know, it could be a staff member, it could be, you know, one of your clients or, you know, it's got to be a stakeholder, obviously, that's got some... Um, investment in in your business because no one wants to see a business fail that's right and and by the way when, when i'm next in your part of the world if you can recommend any great fish and chip shops that'd be good oh i don't know <laughs> any in tassie um, oh there you come on there must be I some haven't in invest, i haven't invested oh well wriston Val actually has not a bad one i like their um, potato cakes they're quite yummy oh okay there you go that was a staple <laughs> when i was going through university the, the potato yeah, cake. potato yeah. cakes yum <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell me, um, where can we find your book, Phil? Uh, you'll find all the information in two places, one on my website, philpreston.com.au, and you'll certainly find many links to the book there. But also if you go onto Amazon or most of the major online sellers, you can get it as a, in an e-reader format or order it as a hard copy online through oh, most, most of the usual channels. So, uh, yeah, ho- hopefully someone out there will want to go out and find it. They will. Of course they will. Now, and what what wise words have you got before we close up today? Uh, look, I think it's just coming back to that point about see purpose as an opportunity for your business to grow your bottom line, not as some touchy feely thing that's that's not relevant um, to anyone. And so, that it's not a separate thing. You can combine the two. And then the next best step is to review what you're currently thinking about your purpose. Um, if you're in a business where you've got several staff, then engaging them in that process is, is actually a great way to get their buy-in and, and build a stronger culture and, and then use it to, to identify opportunities. Um, once you switch from that activity-based uh, mindset to an outcome one, you'll be surprised what you see around you that you might not have seen before. And a lot of executives and owners report that this has um, made us, uh, helped us make some decisions we wouldn't otherwise have made, but also actually stopped us from ma- making some things or decisions that we probably shouldn't have done as well. So um, there, there's benefits on both sides. Yeah, terrific. All right. Well, I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. It's been All great right. having a chat. And you too. I will, um, I'll send you everything and I'll make sure that all the links, and especially to your book, are uh, put in the comments when this great. is ready to upload. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Rose. Bill. Bye. Bye.